going on. So never say that I've never done anything for you guys, because today we're going to be really creepy. I got all my video gear. We're going to the Microsoft Store in an attempt to check out the Surface Studio. All right, so I just got back from the Microsoft Store and testing out the new Surface Studio. So we saw this revealed a couple days ago at the Microsoft press event and immediately they pushed them all out to Microsoft stores so we could try them. And me and my sister, who's not in the video, we decided to check it out because we were both really interested in looking at the product and getting a bit more information on how it actually works because it looked great in the video, but how does it actually perform in the real world? Let's talk about the Surface Studio. Let's talk about the design of the Surface Studio. I mean, it looked gorgeous in all the reveal shots and, and the videos and stuff that they had during the event. And in person, it's just as gorgeous. I think the, the most striking thing, obviously, is the display. Like Panos was talking about, everything else kind of fades away in the presence of the display. And just, if you're comfortable using like a Surface Pro 3 or a Surface Pro 4 and you find that that's a good amount of workspace, prepare for more space than you know what to do with. Because compared to the Surface Pro, the Surface Studio is huge. It gives you a ton of space to work with and the, the pixel density is fantastic. The screen looks great. Viewing angles are phenomenal. Just It was one probably one of the best displays I've seen. You know, definitely holds its own against a 5k iMac easily. Uh, a really good screen. Probably obviously though the most important thing about the Surface Studio is the pen experience. That's really what makes it all interesting to people like us. Without the pen experience it's just a touchscreen iMac and I'm not really that invested. So the pen experience, unfortunately, I can't say too much about. I was really excited to see that Sketchable was pre-installed on the Surface Studio when I went to go test it out, but I'm not really a huge fan of Sketchable. Like, no offense to the Sketchable team, um, but I just for, for the way I work, I, I, I use the pen and ink, the pencil and the pen ink tools a lot, and I find neither of them to be really... Uh, good for what I do, but nevertheless, I did a little bit of sketching in Sketchable, and the pen experience seems to be uh, improved from the Surface Pro 3, which is to say, probably equivalent to the Surface Pro 4. I don't own a Surface Pro 4, I don't use it day to day, uh, but compared to my Surface Pro 3 and the Surface Pro 3 pen experience, this was a marginal step upward. Um, I didn't have the time to really sit there and like bust out a ruler and test diagonal wobbles like some other people have done. I'm assuming uh, it's probably still there to some degree. Will that get upgraded with the software? I don't know. Personally, for me, when I use my Surface Pro, the wobbliness has never bothered me. I've never even noticed it until people pointed it out online. Maybe that's just because I use a lot of smoothing options on my strokes. I like that very thick graphic look as opposed to more subtle strokes. Uh, for me, that never bothered me. Um, I found that the response on the low end with the pen was slightly better than the Surface Pro 3 pen, but still not as good as a lot of the other things I've tested that remains my biggest point of contention with Microsoft's Ntrig technology is the fact that there is not enough response on the low end with light strokes. It's not a deal breaker, but it's still there. And I'm hoping maybe when we get the Surface Pro 5, we'll get a new version of the pen that'll fix that completely. Um, I thought I was being clever because I knew there wasn't gonna be any software really that I wanted to test, which is stuff like Photoshop I knew a lot of people were interested in Paint Tool Sci. I wanted to test Manga Studio. Uh, so I brought a flash drive with me, and I had a uh, copy, a portable copy of Paint Tool Sci and Photoshop. And I was like, all right, I'm going to get around this. I don't need to install anything. I'll just launch them off the pen drive and see how they work. Um, but I tried to, and I got an admin password prompt. So I was like, oh, man. So I went to go talk to one of the people. I'm like, can you just type in the password so I can test this out? And apparently the way the Surface Studios in the store are imaged even if you type in the password correctly, it'll still bounce you back. It won't let you run anything other than what's already pre-installed. So that kind of sucked. Like the store isn't even on there. I was kind of like, oh, maybe I'll get the, the store trial of the uh, you know, universal app version of ArtRage. I use that a lot. And even then, you, you can't do it. So you're limited to whatever's on the device when you go test it out in the store, which kind of sucks. So my, my creativity and my, my imaginative thinking was dashed. Uh, but overall, the pen experience was really... Uh, better than I expected, better than my Surface Pro 3. Uh, I don't know if it's good as something like a Wacom, but the difference there is marginal, as long as you're not interested in things like tilt. Uh, the eraser worked great. I think the eraser is way better than Wacom's eraser because like it feels rubbery, 
So when you erase, it feels like you're using an eraser and it gives you that give that you get on paper, which is pretty cool. So I guess at the end of the day, the question is, will I get one? Or do I want one? You know, even if I can't afford it, would I want one? And the answer right now is probably no. No, I don't want one. The reason that I don't want one is because I don't really need one at, at this moment. You know, the computer I have right now is every bit as powerful as the Surface Studio minus the display. I would have to spend something like $3,600 or $3,600 to get an equivalent Surface Studio to the system I have right now. It's definitely aimed at designers and things like that. Um, I'm not a designer. I'm not a professional designer. I'm a hobbyist through and through. And I think Something like that for me would be overkill. My sister, however, is a professional graphic designer, and she is very seriously considering selling her Razer Blade 14 and purchasing a Surface Studio. The, the top of the line, four grand and change model, like going all in on it. So she was really impressed and really liked it because um, this, the Entrick technology is the only other pen besides Wacom Tech that seems to work right out of the box, no config required with Paint Tools I, and that's her painting program of choice. So she was really impressed by it. I am really impressed by it. I really like it, but I don't see myself buying it anytime soon simply because it's not really designed for me. It's designed for pro customers. As cool as the dial is, not super mandatory for me. Although if it keeps being iterated on and future Surface uh, hardware can work with it, I can see myself getting one. Uh, especially as I continue to upgrade my Surface Pros, if I continue to stay with that product line. Um, the big weak point for me, and I tried asking one of the reps about it, and they didn't seem to know, was the hard drive. The hard drive is like the Achilles heel of a Surface Studio, as far as I'm concerned. This is, we're going into 2017, I should not have to even be thinking about 5400 RPM laptop hard drives, and I'm assuming that's what's in the Surface Studio. They have a hybrid drive, it has an SSD partition, and then the rest is a platter disk. And considering the small size, I don't even think there's enough physical space in terms of like height in the chassis to fit a three and a half inch hard drive. So it has to be a slow 54 RPM laptop drive. And I appreciate the fact that they at least put 64 and 128 gigs of SSD storage on there that can be, you know, your application stuff can be moved onto that to install and run faster. But my question that I don't know is, is that SSD partition an NVMe M.2 SSD, which is significantly faster, or is it running a standard SATA 3 SSD partition? Like, is it running off the same SATA 3 connection that uh, the hard disk is using? If so, it will be significantly slower than even the storage in the Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book. So, I think for $4,000, I should be getting one or two terabytes of NVMe M.2 SSD storage, full stop, not even have to worry about hard disks. Because if the hard drive dies, I'm assuming it's not user replaceable, and you're out your fucking computer because of a almost 20-year-old piece of technology in your brand new Surface Studio. So that's a huge red flag for me, and probably one of the biggest reasons why I would not buy one is that if I can't get to that hard drive and replace it, if it dies, and it will die, especially if you're gonna spend $3,000 plus on a computer you're probably gonna keep for five or more years. Another thing I'm interested in too is if there's display out. I didn't ask anybody about this because it'd be great if after the hardware in the Surface Studio is kind of worthless, like you can still use it as a Cintiq, essentially, uh, with whatever else you decide to buy. Don't know, those are two big questions for me, is the NVMe, the upgraded ability of the hard disk, or at least the ability to swap it out if it dies, and monitor out functionality on the studio. I'm assuming they're gonna be bad answers to all three of them, and in that regard, I wouldn't buy one. At least not yet. Maybe the next gen, but for now, I'm not gonna go like sell a kidney for one. I'm gonna stay with my workstation. I like the flexibility. I like the power that I have right now, and I see no reason to upgrade to this. But for the target market, super solid, really impressive piece of kit, and I think they'll enjoy it a lot. Uh, so if my sister ends up buying a Surface Studio and we get one in the house, uh, she's moving in a few months, but hopefully if she does get it, it'll arrive here before then, I could do an actual review on it because I could have it in here and test it out. Uh, but I'll keep you posted on that. So 
that's all I got for this, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. So I have to get in on the action too. I tried to call them yesterday and be like, yo, can I come and record? So I really want to check this thing out. But apparently you can't talk to a person over the phone anymore. It just, it's just it's machines. So we're just going to walk in here with some gear, try and set up and shoot. Uh, and hopefully it'll be worth me getting up at 8.30 in the morning and driving all the way to the store, which is far away for me because I live in the middle of nowhere. So let's see how this goes. Stop it.